So that was just a small sidestep on the meters. Uh, let's go back to the whiteboard and look at a few of the different financial models available at the moment. So this is a fairly simple setup where you have two different meters. There's one bi-directional meter, which is in between the grid and yourself, and that just measures whatever is coming in or out. So it knows exactly what's going out and what's coming in. And that will be a second meter that is in between the solar panel and yourself. So this kind of structure will be used for a feed-in tariff structure, right? Whereby they can measure exactly what it is that you have produced for which you receive a certain compensation. And then they also measure how much you're feeding into the grid or taking out of the grid. Then a slight variation on this is the power purchase agreement. So with the power purchase agreement, you are selling all of your power to the grid. So you're feeding your solar power into the grid upstream of your main energy meter. And then you are buying all of the power from the grid. So a power purchase agreement is also referred to as a buy all and sell all agreement. So that's a PPA or the power purchase agreement. So nowadays the most conventional model is that your solar power is being connected to the grid downstream of your meter and that you can do whatever you want. You can draw power from the grid, you can produce power of your solar and use it yourself, or you can produce power and feed it through your bi-directional or smart meter back into the grid. All right, let him shut up for a second. I just want to explain to you that the content of this video is copied from the complete course of energy systems. If this information is enough for you, great. If you want to learn more and if you want to get access to the complete course, then check the information in the description below. All right, you go ahead again. Now, from here on forward, there's many different financial models that can be used in such a situation, but it changes a little to nothing to the physical way in which your grid-type solar energy system is set up, right? So let's discuss a few of the different compensation models. So the first model, we already looked at it before, the net metering, and this is a fairly simple system. So they measure how much you are feeding into the grid, they measure how much you're taking out of the grid, they just deduct it, and the balance, that's what you pay. Um, so that's net metering. Successor tariff is a very general term, and again, it depends on uh, what the local conditions are, because they have all different kind of structures. Net billing is one of these successor tariffs, which is which sounds a lot like net metering, but is substantially different. With net metering, you get the same energy price for what you're taking out of the grid as what you're feeding into the grid. With net billing, this is different. They have a certain rate for what you're taking out of the grid and a different and almost always lower rate for what you're feeding into the grid. And by the end of the term, by the end of the month or the year, uh, you have to pay the balance, right? So net billing sounds the same, but is really different from net metering. Then there's net metering at the market rate, which is actually quite interesting because here they use that time of use measurement that we mentioned before, because they will compensate you for the power that you're feeding into the grid, depending on which time you're doing it, corresponding to the market rate at that time, right? So if you are in the afternoon, we talked about this before, if you're in the afternoon, normally electricity prices are higher. So if you're feeding into the grid at that point, you are being compensated at a higher kilowatt hour price than if you do it at a different time of the day. So this results some people that really manage the system well. They try to produce as much as they can during the day. They try to feed in as much as they can during the day, during the peak hours. And then during the night hours, they can consume power from the grid, but they pay a much lower price for it. So that's net metering at the market rate. Then there is net purchase and sale, which is somewhat similar to net billing. It's a different term, but it seems a lot like net billing, where there's a different rate for what you're taking out of the grid and what you're feeding into the grid, but the rates are fixed. And the last one, which is relatively new, which is net metering, but then virtual net metering, whereby you can sell the power that you're feeding back into the grid to people in your local community which I believe is a very interesting uh, structure. And I think this might really grow quite a bit if the utilities allow for this to develop further. Now, I hope it becomes clear by now that all of these different structures, all of these different compensation models, they, they actually don't change much about the actual structure of your grid tight system. It's all about, let's say, negotiations between you as the, the local power producer and the utilities, right? Uh, sometimes we can do something about it, most of the times we cannot. 
but this is all about how you finance how the what the financial agreements are between you and the utilities so well done by now you understand quite a bit more about the different financial